welcome back. I'm certainly glad you decided to spend a half hour with us today. I think you'll enjoy the little painting we're going to do, and I hope you take the time to paint along. Or you pull up your old easy chair and just relax with us. I thought today we'd just do a fun painting, one that's a lot of, oh, it's, you'll have a good time with it. Let's just do it. And let's have a little touch of water in this painting today. So, now once again, we want it to be lighter toward the horizon. So start at the bottom and work upward. And your darker color then will be down here on the base. See there? And then just work upward. And automatically, once again, it'll get lighter in value as it works upward toward the horizon. Okay, and then we'll need some water on the other side. Don't want it left out. I don't know exactly where land's going to be and water's going to be. So we just cover it all with water. And if we want a tree to live here or here, we'll just, we'll just drop it in. There. Now then, very lightly, just gently go across and bring it all together. Okay. Now then, we can wash our brush. And we wash our brushes with good old odorless thinner. I never use it. Now just decide where your mountain lives in your world and push very firmly and just drop that little rascal in. And the only thing you're worried about is a nice outside edge. You don't, you don't care what's happening on the inside right now. We will later, but right now we're just looking for a nice outside edge. As I say, use a lot of pressure here. Push that paint right into the fabric. Now, scrape off all the excess paint. Just get in there and really scrape it off. You're not going to hurt the canvas. There we go. With our large brush, we'll just pull that. And then it'll mix with the liquid white that's on the canvas and automatically it'll get lighter and lighter down toward the base. Just softer and softer. There we go. And that son of a gun should look like it's just sort of floating right up here in the sky. And that gives you a nice base now to, to begin putting highlights on. Let me clean the old brush again. I like to wash these brushes. Shake it off. <laughs> there we go. Now then, Today I'm just going to use, let's just take titanium white, pull it out very flat. It's just plain old white. Now this is one of those times you really need a firm paint. This paint should be very firm. You know, people say, how firm is it? Look at that. The knife literally sticks right on the palette. It's very firm. Cut off a little roll of paint, like so. Now then, no pressure. No pressure. There. See there? Just touch and just let it flow right down the side of the mountain. But no pressure. You want it to break like this and have all those little holes and bumps in it. There we go. And up here. See there? It's so easy at times it's hard. There we go. No pressure though. Can't say that enough times. Probably the most common mistake made is applying too much pressure. And this is one of the best ways that there is to learn to use a knife. And if you can make if you can make snow break on these mountains, then you can just make a multitude of other things. It's unbelievable what you can do just by learning to let this snow break here. That delicate touch, light touch. I think I've mentioned over and over again when I was teaching Steve, my son, to paint. The only way I could get it across to him was to tell him that I wanted him to pretend that he was a whisper that just floated across the mountain. And, and then he understood. It worked for him. And he makes some of the most beautiful mountains today you've ever seen. Using a little blue and white here in our little roll of paint. And I want to put a shadow behind there. No pressure. Just let it float. See there? Just let that float right in there. And each highlight, each little peak in here, if you want it to be an individual, needs a shadow. There, see, it's right there. Give him a little shadow. And you can, you can change this mountain continually. Maybe you want to put a, 
a bump over here, another peak. See, you can do that. In your world, you can create any illusion that you want. I think that's what attracted me to painting so much. I could create any kind of world that I want. Nothing hurts here, no pain. Nobody's unhappy. It's a pleasant place. Everything's nice here. Okay, now then with a large brush, I want to create the illusion of mist. So all I'm going to do here is just tap. Just tap the base. Just tap, following the angles in the mountain. Always following those angles. And then lift upward. See? And all the little misty things just sort of happen. Over here, follow these angles. Sometimes I'll take a little of that blue on the brush. Maybe you want to bring this right on around. I'll take a little of that shadow color. And we can just make it sort of look like it wraps around. That's sneaky. And it adds a little more interest to your mountain. That easy. Then just sort of tap it out. And bring it together. Okay. And that's all there is to it. Let's have some fun. I'm going to mix up some black, Prussian blue. Oops, shoot, we'll throw some Van Dyke, some crimson in there. A little sap green. Whatever you got. Just mainly dark colors. There, let me clean the knife off. Now let's use, let's use our old fan brush today. Let's go in here and load some color right onto the brush. Just load both sides of the brush up. Now then, let's have some fun. Let's just push in. Maybe there's some little background things that live way back in the distance back here, far away. And I'm just pushing and making the bristles bend upward. Just, uh, just la 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 la. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Just be happy, enjoy, have fun. There. Now I want some reflections under this, so I just grab the bottom of it and pull it straight down. See there? Because the canvas is wet, <laughs> you can do this and get away with it. If you had a dry canvas, you'd be in agony city. Then go gently across, just like so. See? And instant reflections. That easy. Maybe, maybe in our world back here, maybe there's a happy little tree that lives right here, a little evergreen tree. See? Just touch and then use just the corner of the brush and work back and forth, back and forth. And we got a little tree. Maybe he's got a friend here It's a little bigger. There. Tree needs a friend too. There he is. Now see, I'm sort of weird. I name all these little trees and talk to them, and, but that's okay. That's okay. Artists are supposed to be a little, a little different. There, so we can get away with things like that. Maybe out here there's a little baby tree. Maybe they ran him off, made him go live out here by himself. All kinds of things. Let me get another fan brush. I have several of them going so I don't have to continually clean them. We'll take a little of that same color we made the tree out of and go into some cad yellow. And that'll turn a beautiful green color because there's blue in there. There. Okay, let's go up here. Now then, I just want to put the indication here and there of some little grassy areas that are far, far away back here. Just a few. It's too far away to see a lot of detail. You can grab that and lift upward, make it look like little distant trees. See, that paint moves on there. There we go. All kinds of little things. A little yellow ochre in there too. What the heck? Maybe we'll have some nice fall looking colors in this painting. And with all the shiny colors, a little liquid white. Pull it out flat, and then just cut across, okay? Now then with that, we can just come right up in here, and we'll just cut in a happy little water line. Act like you're just trying to cut a hole right through the canvas, back and forth. This canvas is tough. Chances are you couldn't hurt it if you wanted to. Maybe there's a little ripple lives out here, and one out here, wherever you want them. Okay, 
Now then, tell you what, I like doing those trees. Let's do another one. Back into my dark color with a fan brush. Load a lot of color. Let's go up here. Maybe there lives in our world a bigger evergreen here. Big, strong sun we got. Use the corner of the brush and just make the bristles bend downward. And I'm using the same corner of the brush all the way through the tree. I'm just pushing harder and harder so it uses more and more of the brush. There. These little rascals live right there in your fan brush. Or you can do them with a one or two inch brush. Tell you what, let's have a third tree. We can have as many trees as we want in here. I'm gonna get over here and find me a one inch brush. Go right through that same color. And let's put a, let's put a happy little bush right here. Sort of have to begin making some decisions here. Where do you want all these little things to live? There we go. Hmm. That's super. I know you could do it. Now then, underneath here, we're going to want some reflection, so just reverse the brush where I've been pushing upward, and then we'll push downward. And where you have tall items up on top, you want items that are long below it. Where they're short, then make these not so long. You knew that. Okay. And those will turn in, hopefully, to some very nice little reflections. Just a nice, clean, dry brush. I just like to beat on the brush and pull straight down very lightly. So I have to do, just touch, pull downward, and then go across. Okay. Now then, I'm going to take my knife, a little bit of dark sienna, a little white into it, and get a very small roll of paint on the knife. Okay, now then, let's go up here. Just put the indication here and there of a few little trunks in these trees. Give them, give them some nice trunks so they can stand up strong and tall. There we go. And we can go back to our fan brush. It has the green on it. There. And I just want to put the indication of a few little highlights on these trees. Don't kill all the dark, though. That dark contrast. Mm. When we get finished, that's what makes those son of a gun stand out. There, just a little. Evergreens are normally darker than other trees, do, so leave them that way. I'm going to dip the brush into a small amount of the liquid white and begin applying some color to these things. Pull the brush in one direction. Be right back. Get some sap green here. There we go. Sap green, cad yellow. One direction. Load the bristles full of color. Let's go up here. Now you have to make some decisions. Where do your little bushes live? Just touch and give a little, little push, just enough to bend the bristles a tiny bit. And we'll alternate some of the colors here. I went into a little yellow ochre. Now we can reverse the brush and drop a little of that right in there if you want to. Right in there. Maybe up in here there's a darker green living. There he is, there he is, there he is. See? There's a big, strong bush over here. He's my friend. There. Okay, and another one. But notice how these are going in in layers. Those layers, those layers, little Indian yellow too, are what create the illusion of depth in your bushes. Reverse it, drop in a few. See there, just reverse your brush. And they don't have to be exact, just a general shape. Little bright red once in a while too. Ooh, that's a pretty one sitting over here in the corner. And we'll reverse him right into the water. Now then, with our clean, dry, two-inch brush, just barely touch the top, just graze it. Just barely, barely touch. And then go across. And that makes those beautiful mirror reflections that easy. Okay, thought you'd like it. It's always fun. I'm gonna go into some Van Dyke Brown. Let's put some land under here. Shoo, we need something for all these little bushes and trees to stand on. 
Don't want them to fall over here in the water and make a big splash. There we go. Now we take the same old brown, add a little white to it. And then come back. Just add the indication of a few highlights here. Just here and there. It's barely grazing. Just grazing. And then with our little fan brush that had the greens and yellows on it, we can come back and break up that straight line. Just let some little grassy areas run right down on the land. A little liquid white on the knife, and we can cut in a water line. Just drop it in. Keep these lines basically straight, even though they follow the, the land. You want them to be straight, or your water will look like it's going to run right out of the painting. There we go. Okay. Let's have some, let's have some fun. We got this whole other side to do over here. Take the two inch brush, go right into my dark color. A lot of paint on the bristles. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe on this side, let's get brave. This is your bravery test today. I like to give those. Over here lives a big tree. Don't think I have to say that again. That's, boy, that's pretty evident. That's a big tree. This will really check your bravery out. There he is. There he is. Now this, by virtue of it being so big, it just indicates that this tree is much closer to you. And that helps create the illusion of depth. Maybe the little tree we back here somewhere is just as big, but it's far, far away. And by being far away, as you know, it looks smaller. There we go. Just fill that all up. Hmm. This you could put on with a paint roller. Doesn't matter. But it's a good place to practice your strokes. There. Tell you what. Sometimes we avoid this old big brush. And it's a super brush. It'll do fantastic things for you. Let's load it to a chisel edge. Both sides full of paint. Same old dark color but a lot of paint in the bristles. It takes a lot of paint to stick all these bristles together. See how sharp that son of a gun is? There. Now then, with that brush, maybe there's a large evergreen. Shoo, there is now. There's right there. Just the corner of the brush. We begin working back and forth. Back and forth, like so. And let's make a big evergreen tree that lives right here in front of your mountain. Maybe he's got a little crook in him. There, I like trees that are sort of crooked. There. Okay, let's put a tree trunk in that. For that, we'll just use some dark sand and white. Same thing we used on the other side. There. And since the fan brush already has all that green on it, we can use it to just put in the indication of some highlights. Not too many, not too many. There we go. So you don't have to paint the whole trunk because you won't see the whole trunk. All right, now, let me find another fan brush here. There's one. I'm gonna take some Van Dyke Brown and let's build the indication of just a tree trunk in here. Like so. We can just make out a tree trunk or two in there. And we'll go into my liquid white and into some yellow and some sap green. Pull that brush through, load a lot of color. A lot of color. Get a little more green on it. There we go. A lot of paint. Now then, let's go up here, barely touching, begin laying in this large tree. Don't let the brush slide. Just push, let the bristles bend a little, and just begin forming your individual shapes here. Don't just hit these at random. Think about, think about all those little happy limbs that live in here. There we go. See, all these things are there. All you have to do is just push them out of your brush. Mm. Super. 
Okay, maybe over here, add a little yellow ochre. Maybe there's a bush that lives right here. Just sort of pick them out. Now, there. Okay, pick up a little more green, a little more green, and right here. This one's more in shadow, so it's darker. There we go. See, he just hides right in there. Layer after layer. There, a little more color on the brush, and reload the brush as necessary. As you use up the paint in it, add some more. Okay, tell you what, maybe there's a big path in there. Take some Van Dyke Brown, and you have to make a big decision here. Where's your path live? Maybe your path lives right there. So it lay in a basic shape, just using the brown. And we don't know where this path goes. It goes up here and hides behind the bushes somewhere. Just basic shape. And then we'll take some white, a little dark sienna. And let's come back in here and just let this barely, barely graze. Just, okay. It's just like putting snow on the mountain. It's the same, same exact technique. A little more of the liquid white. Back into my yellows and greens. Now then, you have to start making decisions. Are these bushes in front of you evergreen or behind them? I think they're in front. So let them come right over in, right over in front of it. There. Vary your colors and drop them in. Every once in a while, drop in a little yellow ochre, and Indian yellow, a little bright red. There's a, a sparkler right there. Beautiful little bush. Another little green one, and as many as you want, but work in layers. Remember that these bushes are individuals. Do one at a time. There we go. See, now let some of these things come up over the path. That'll push the path down into your painting. Don't want that path just to float around. See that? Now then, we can take the knife and just scrape in a few little sticks and twigs here and there. You've got a finished painting. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It'll certainly teach you how to use all the equipment and have a lot of fun. From all of us, happy painting and God bless. Mm -hmm.